the Persian Empire, an innovative and militaristic world superpower that ruled ancient Mesopotamia and at one point accounted for more than 40% of the world's population. The Greeks, a loose alliance of city-states that dominated the Mediterranean and whose progressive political, philosophical, and social advances lay the base for Western civilization today. These two ancient superpowers came together in a 50-year conflict known as the Greco-Persian Wars, a devastating confrontation that was sparked in the year 499 BC with an event known as the Ionian Revolt. The year is 518 BC, and after the initial conquering of Lydia by the Persian King Cyrus in 547 BC, nearly the entire western Mediterranean coast of Asia Minor is ruled by the Persians and their king, Darius. This conquered area includes Ionian Greece, a situation of city-states on and just off of Asia Minor's Mediterranean coast. This area was settled by Greeks in approximately 1000 BC after the Dorian immigration from the north, an event which pushed the ancestors of Ionian Greeks across the Aegean Sea. Here, the Ionian Greeks lived under their own control until being subjected to new rulers under their Persian invaders. To ensure some loyalty from their Greek subjects, the Persians appointed Greek-born but Persian-sympathizing tyrants for every city-state, known as satraps. This appointment provides a false pretense of control to the Greeks, while in reality, the Persians have complete control of their puppet rulers. While this may have appeased some, there was still deep resentment that rumbled within the Greek population. The time at which the Ionian Greeks lost their power to the Persians was one of exploration and experimentation with their political systems. Some of these Ionian city-states were developing forms of democracy, just as Athens was doing around the same time. This anti-tyrannical sentiment was increased by tenfold because of the appointment of Greek citizens to act as the rulers. While the Persians may have seen the Greek rulers as wise substitutes for themselves, the freedom-loving Greeks felt betrayed by having a former countryman running their city-state. No doubt the Ionian Greeks recognized these tyrants as the Persians in disguise, and would have looked upon their once fellow Greeks as treasonous. Another cause, suggested by historians such as Herodotus, states that the Ionians resented the Persians due to economic reasons. In the late 6th century to early 5th century BC, the Mediterranean Sea was an area of abundant trade. The Ionians were extremely successful in trade at this time, a success that would have been increased under the powerful connections of an empire such as Persia. However, the Persians demanded large sums of taxes at this time, an amount seen by the Ionians as unfair compared to other regions of Persia's empire. The resentment caused by the restriction of wealth of these Ionian city-states is also a contributing factor to the eagerness in which the Ionians responded to the call to revolt. One major criticism of the validity of the known history of the Greco-Persian Wars is its source. The only known documentation of the Ionian revolt and wars are from Herodotus an ancient historian attributed with the invention of history. The significance of this is that Herodotus was Greek, leading many to believe that Herodotus gave a biased account of the war that portrays the Persians poorly and falsely. As documented by Herodotus, the spark that ignited the revolt occurred in the year 499 BC, with the Ionians still under the control of King Darius and the Persians. At this time, the Persians were strong enough to march further west into mainland Greece, a step that must first be taken into the Aegean Sea. Resting immediately in between Asia Minor and Greece are the Cyclades, a group of islands, the most prosperous of those being the city-state of Naxos. In comes Aristagoras, the noble, rich, Greek-born, but Persian-appointed tyrant of Miletus, the most prosperous of the Ionian city-states. After being persuaded by a group of rich Naxians who had been exiled and desperate to go home, and also recognizing Naxos as a potential addition to his control, Aristagoras set his sights on capturing Naxos. Understanding that Miletus alone would not have enough power to capture Naxos, Aristagoras appealed to Atrophernes, the governor of Lydia. Atrophernes then went to his cousin, King Darius, to ask for reinforcements to capture Naxos. 
What Aristagoras was granted was 200 warships, as well as a large army under the command of the king's brother, Megabates. With an ample amount of ships and a large army under the Persian commander Megabates, the Persians and Ionians sailed to Naxos and laid siege. Intertwined with the constant power struggle between Megabates and Aristagoras, and having to contend with a well-prepared Naxos, after four months, the siege was declared a loss, and the Persians and Ionians sailed home. The failure to capture Naxos meant much more to Aristagoras than just a poor reputation. Not only did Aristagoras owe copious amounts of money to the Persians who supplied the failed siege, but he also made enemies with Megabates, who as mentioned was King Darius' brother. This left Aristagoras with one choice, be stripped of his titles and be most likely killed, or revolt. Okay, so before we go into how the revolt started, I would like to explain some of the reasons for the revolt. Reasons include an anti-tyrant feeling, having to pay tribute to a new Persian king, the king's failure to understand the Greeks' need for freedom, and many more. Before the revolt, a man named Aristagoras wanted to rise and gain power within the Persian Empire. The way to secure power within the empire was to integrate himself with the Persians. In order to do this, he would have to gain Persia a great victory. So Aristagoras persuaded the Persians to attempt to take the island city-state of Naxos. Unfortunately for Aristagoras, the expedition failed and the Persians blamed this loss on him. Aristagoras also owed a lot of money to the Persians to make things a lot worse. To protect himself, Aristagoras had to persuade the people of Miletus to rebel in the name of Greek liberty. The citizens of Miletus, already resistant to Persian rule, supported Aristagoras. The rebels killed the local Persian garrison and freed the city. Of course, Miletus could not stand up against the Persian Empire alone. They needed help. After the Ionians failed attempt of a revolt, the Persians had to put new measures into place. King Darius was surprisingly lenient, at least to the cities that agreed to submit to Persian rule once again. Darius also brought back the garrisons and taxes to the recaptured city-states. Back in Athens, the Athenians were afraid that because of their involvement in the revolt that Darius would come after them next. Because of the Ionian Revolt, the next 43 years of Greek history will consist of constant battles with the Persian Empire as they attempt to invade the Greek, main the Greek mainland. 